Hey folks, welcome to the Wealth Transfer with TC. Today I'm going to talk about the European regulations called the MICA regulations that are scheduled to take place on July 1st concerning stable coins. Now there is some worry within the wealth transfer community and maybe uh, the crypto community uh, concerning this because uh, Tether is not yet compliant with the EU regulations. But I'm going to touch base on that. I'm going to go over some things because Tether is working on some other projects to make sure that they are compliant. So I want to go over that because some people are saying that Tether is going to crash on July the 1st. Right, That's when these regulations take effect. And there are some people that are considering or they have already canceling their USDT orders concerning Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. And so I just want to make sure that uh, before you make that decision that you hear uh, what I have to say concerning what is taking place with USDT. Now, before I get into all that, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just sharing information, giving you my thoughts and my opinions on that information. Now, if you look at some of the news headlines concerning Tether and EU regulations, you can see here, could uphold Tether delisting signal trouble for USDT in Europe, circles stablecoin to benefit from EU rule shift, analysts say, uncertainty looms for crypto industry and stablecoins ahead of MICA deadline, right? So there's a deadline by July the 1st that these things are going to take place as far as Tether being non-compliant, now OKX has already delisted USDT. A lot of these actually exchanges haven't made that decision. So looking at uh, just some of the things that they are trying to do, this is back in on May 2nd, as far as Tether being compliant. Tether enhances compliance measures with channelless eco monitoring system. Tether, the largest company in the digital asset industry, has collaborated with channelless Chainless, almost sounds like chain analysis, the blockchain data platform to develop a customizable solution for monitoring secondary market activity. Right, so this is one of the things that they are doing to try to enhance their compliance. There could be some other things that they are working on that we are not hearing about, right? Because nobody's really saying anything right now. It's not really that big of a deal in the news. And I think that if Tether was going to crash, it would have crashed already, especially if a lot of these different uh, platforms were going to delist it. Now, you could have a sudden burst of announcements in the days leading up to July the 1st. So you do want to look at that. Is it going to crash Tether? Is it going to cause Tether to completely fall apart? I don't, I don't believe so. Now, the other thing that you want to look at is Tether's gold-backed stablecoin. It's called Alloy. It says here, Tether, one of the most prominent names in the stablecoin market, has introduced a new player, Alloy. This gold-backed stablecoin promises to merge the enduring value of gold with the flexibility of digital currency. So this is a new stablecoin that is backed by gold. All right, so maybe there's something else there going on. This was, uh, this was announced this year, and now it's coming to fruitation. So there are some good things that are going on. Uh, so I don't think Tether is going to crash. Now, it could be delisted. So I want to go over a few things because, you know, I have seen people say they're going to cancel their USDT orders or they're asking if they should. And it's just really main due to the fact of what's going on with the EU, right? And maybe they think Tether is going to crash because of all this. I don't think it's going to crash. But um, also, too, because somebody that uh, nobody knows and uh, they had a dream dealing with Tether crashing and they just started posting these videos on YouTube recently. So I don't have any clue uh, as far as, you know, this person's reputation, as far as a dreamer or a prophet or anything like that. And so I, some people now believe that it's going to crash on July the 1st. Uh, now, I did do some research for other exchanges. So OKX delisted USDT already, right? So that was already in play. Also, you have Uphold that is delisting USDT. Kraken are talking about it, right? Maybe they're waiting to see if there's anything relating to USDT being compliant. So for other exchanges like KuCoin and Mexi, I haven't seen anything yet, uh, but there is a chance that you'll be forced to change over your USDT to USDC or USD or some other stablecoin that is compliant. Now, the, the main reason that most people are concerned because a lot of people have USDT buy and sell limit orders. 
Right, so that is a cause of concern like for Bitcoin, low buy limit orders or sell limit orders, uh, maybe on those platforms that uh, maybe they're only using USDT and a limited amount of USDC. And so if Tether is delisted on your platform, you're going to have some extra funds to, to do whatever that you decide that you want to deal with. You know, of course, you know, anytime since we're dealing with the wealth transfer, especially that you pray about what to do with those funds. Now, one of the things you can do is move those funds into low buy limit orders with other stable coins. Like you can use USD if it's available or USDC or the euro or just your native fiat currency. If Tether is removed from your platform, consider that Tether could be relisted once compliant. I don't know about that, though, you know, because it's just one of those things where, you know, they've always been after USDT because any type of crashing with Tether would absolutely decimate the crypto markets for another. If you guys want to wait around for like a whole another year or two, right? if you really want to put it into that perspective. So you could use those funds to buy other cryptos. Uh, you could use those funds for, you know, just holding it and waiting for any crypto opportunities or even stock opportunities, or just use those funds for other purposes. Like, you know, maybe you need to buy some extra food uh, because everything that's going on with Russia and all that stuff, you know, people are looking to find extra ways to, to stock up on groceries and so on. So you could use maybe those extra funds. If people are on seven or eight platforms with orders for USDT, you know, uh, just like I have, I have a lot of orders just, not just for Bitcoin, but for all the top cryptocurrencies, I have orders in USDT. If I am forced to cancel those orders, then if I already have it in USD, then I can do something else with those funds. But that's something that I'll take a look at my profile, pray about, and then go from there. Despite studying all the different prophetic words, there's no clear-cut direction of where markets are going. Stock market, crypto market, and so on. There's only a few people that I really trust. And, you know, to be honest with you folks, I don't consider anybody who's ever falsely prophesied, given dates and time frames, said God said by this date or by this time, and it didn't happen and they've done it consistently. I don't listen to those people at all whatsoever. So when we talk about timelines... I don't consider any of those people's timelines, right? I don't consider, because it, to me, if you're inaccurate most of the time, all you're doing is throwing me off. If I'm sitting here to believe that some of these people have been falsely prophesying or given dates and time frames, if I keep following them or if I consider their prophecies, I'm being thrown off what God is, what God is really saying through those people who are trustworthy. Right. So that's something that people need to think about when they are listening to people, you know, with this channel, folks, I share I've shared a lot of people. I've shared unsaved people who have talked about crypto or whatever. I've talked I've shared saved people. I've, I've shared controversial people. I've shared different people that had different opinions or how they see things or prophetically speaking. Right. And there are some that I wish I had never shown on here because they completely misled the wealth transfer and they completely misled me right and i vowed that i would never allow that to happen again you know people have to when they're looking at the future and they're looking at these things and somebody comes out and just posts a dream about tether crashing and then you know half the people in the wealth transfer are talking about whether or not to cancel their usdt orders to me that's important enough to say wait a minute where's all this coming from things need to be analyzed right and just because it's being removed from platforms doesn't mean that the value is going to drop just like stable coins that are only on maybe two or three platforms they're at a dollar they're not crashing so i don't really expect usdt to crash on july the first so for me i'm not changing any of my usdt orders i'm not canceling any of the orders unless they are going to delist usdt so if different platforms do decide to start delisting usdt We'll probably hear something in the next couple of days uh, concerning that. But until then, we just have to wait and see what happens and what's going to take place. So anyways, folks, that's all that I have for this today. I thank you guys for listening. God bless. TC out.